door on the stand side, trying to get to Blistering Barney. Blistering Barney holding on from Vaynor. Then Alpine Stroll and out. Weaving around in the white jacket, independent act still with a lot of work to do. March Moon has the lead. Zane Knight's on the near side, far side. Uh, behind these Thunder Max Australian Angels now getting going. March Moon all of a sudden. The equilibrium is flustered. Australian Angel and Zane Knights are going past. And in the centre, Australian Angel narrowly, maybe. She has a photo with Zane Knights. They've moved on from Rudimental Insigal and Stunning Beauty. They're facing the final furlong of the harbour. The champ has now gone on. Goes on by about two lengths to Stunning Beauty, followed by Cockalorum and then Insigal. And it is Mahaba the champ in the hands of Kevin Stott. This is a double for Kevin. Mahaba the champ quickens away to win well. Cockalorum second, tight third. the front in quite impressive style here mass cool behind though in the black jacket with a nose band sorry i should say may song as they race inside the final furlong it's ring of light mass cools on the outside may song is on the inside ring of light's gonna have to dig deep here and does so what a game performance wins ring of light then from on the outside Barney, who's past Mount Olympus, Vayner, Alpine Stroll, Arabescato. Very few have got involved, and Blistering Barney and Vaynor going on inside the final 100 yards. Blistering Barney, a slender lead. Vaynor on the stand side, trying to get to Blistering Barney. Blistering Barney holding on from Vaynor. Then Alpine Stroll and out. Weaving around in the white jacket, independent act still with a lot of work to do. March Moon has the lead. Zane Knight's on the near side, far side. Uh, behind these Thunder Max Australian Angels now getting going. March Moon all of a sudden. The equilibrium is flustered. Australian Angel and Zane Knights are going past. And in the centre, Australian Angel narrowly, maybe. She has a photo with Zane Knights. They've moved on from Rudimental Insigal and Stunning Beauty. They're facing the final furlong of the harbour. The champ has now gone on. Goes on by about two lengths to Stunning Beauty, followed by Cockalorum and then Insigal. And it is Mahaba the champ in the hands of Kevin Stott. This is a double for Kevin. Mahaba the champ quickens away to win well. Cockalorum second, tight third. the front in quite impressive style here mass cool behind though in the black jacket with a nose band sorry i should say may song as they race inside the final furlong it's ring of light mass cools on the outside may song is on the inside ring of light's gonna have to dig deep here and does so what a game performance wins ring of light then from on the outside Barney, who's past Mount Olympus, Vayner, Alpine Stroll, Arabescato. Very few have got involved, and Blistering Barney and Vaynor go. Who sadly no longer with us, Esther Dahmer, but she was viewed as a potential pattern filly. And Insigal was only beaten a length on that occasion. The, the third that day, Car Seed of Julie Camacho has come out and run well in one of the um, valuable races at Lingfield on Good Friday. So I thought it was a decent level of form. A man in the quarter, I think, is his trip. He's run twice at Haydock, he's been six and he's been fifth, but there's no reason why he won't uh, handle the trap. But um, I think just not conditions. Good ground, mile and the course is ideal for him. Well, Thunder Max, the interesting one. We haven't seen him since last Newbury. We sent off favouring the handicap the Craven meeting before that. And obviously, something's got in the way injury-wise, but he looked, he looked like he'd done plenty. Yeah, and he's a horse who can go well fresh as well. He won first time up as a two-year-old and first time out as a three-year-old last year. was third behind Grand Alliance at, uh, at Doncaster over a mile and a quarter. We know what Grand Alliance did last weekend at Newbury. So he does have the ability to go well fresh. He's only had half a dozen starts during his career, so you'd like to think he's open to improvement. He's being gelded as well. A typical woman back from a break, daughter of Nathaniel, 201 days off the track. Yeah, Yard had a winner yesterday at Doncaster, Ian Williams, and she's never won at Haydock, but she's run three solid races around here. She's been fourth and second on a couple of occasions as well. Disappointed on a, on a final start, but she's had a good break, and uh, we'll see what she can do first time up. OK. She will jump out of stall 11. I rattled down a few more. Splendid, when he won his maiden at Newcastle, I thought he might kick on a little bit, but a mark of 80... 
Yeah, and he only had three runs last season for whatever reason, so he didn't have a, a totally smooth run. But his two-year-old form, you mentioned the win at Newcastle. His race course debut was at, at Newmarket in August 21, and he's third behind Kariba. So, you know, that tells us what, what ability he's got. Won't mind a bit of easy in the ground. I'm not sure how much easier will be, but good ground shouldn't be an excuse. And But he's looking for his first win on turf, but the Newmarket run proves that isn't a problem. Since Bycatch has got a chance for Carl Burke and a feature seven for a handicap later in the afternoon, he's got Tell Red here for John Kenny, Richard Oliver will be on board. He had a decent season last year. He won twice. He won at Beverly, won at Pontefract, both over a mile and a quarter. He's been placed at Haydock in the past. Disappointed on his final start, but that was his first run on the all-weather, so that might not have brought out the best in him, but we know he's got cause for. David Amara doubly represented. C. Gray is the amount of Jason Watson. E.T. is the amount of Ross Ryan. Yeah, C. Gray has only had four starts in his life. Two for David, his ex-Andrew Bolding. He makes his turf debut. He's unbeaten over a mile and a quarter. Um, and the other one, E.T., he won twice last season, having come from France, mile and a quarter, both at Redcar and at York, and he's only three pounds higher than the last win. OK, it's starting to load up. There's Magical Mile Gun In, son of Sepoy for Eshwal Mohammed and Luke Catton, another horse back from a lengthy absence. And if we look at the bettings and start loading up, Thunderbacks 4 to 1, Kevin Stott just dismounted to get him behind the stalls. In Seagal 5 to 1 with Typical Woman, a splendid 7 to 1, ET 17 to 2, and attracting a bit of support, Stable Companion Seagray 10s. Arcadian Heights the easy, easy to back in, out to 12 to 1, he was a lot shorter overnight. Yeah, he's already won three times this season. Um, he's, he's won twice on, on the turf, but he hasn't won since the middle of 2021. Arctic Fox going into stall 10. Martin Tunner has done a great job since he got her. We were saying on Risk TV Extra, might be an eye-opener for something, the Queen Mother's Cup that she's yeah. normally a, a regular in. Yeah, which she won for Richard Farhey, and she's been placed twice for Martin Todd Hunter. You suspect a mile and a quarter will be on the sharp side, but expected to be staying on an upping trip probably next time. Highway Grey is going to be one of the last in the stall threes back from a break. Yeah, strong travelling horse, mile and a quarter, fast ground in his optimum conditions, but first run of the season, um, you suspect he'll improve for it. OK, he'll be one of the last and he normally doesn't like to be in the stalls for a too long. He'll be a well-run race. Yeah, I thought there's plenty of pace, blistering Barney, Red Derrick, Tell Red, and even Thunder Max can be fairly handy or has led, so yeah, I, I think it'll be plenty. OK, last couple are going to go forward. Sea Grey will go into stall 12. And then I think Highway Grey will complete the lineup into stall 3 for our opening contest. It's the Giants Hall Handicap Stakes. And so we'll extend the 10 furlongs. And as Highway Grey is uh, going to go forward, we'll help the commentary box and say a very good afternoon to David Fitzgerald. Good afternoon, Niall. Afternoon, everybody. Arcadian Knights just going in. That will leave two more before... They go forward, a blistering Barney and Highway Grey are the last two to go. They're just putting the finishing touches on Arcadian Knights. Hasn't quite gone forward. Well, she's been busy already this year. Has won three times on the all-weather. And very nearly there now. And the door is closed. So it's just the final two for our first race of the flat season at Haydock Park. Final one to load is Blistering Barney. And 13 of them set to race. And they're off and racing the flat season opener at Haydock Park. And it's the Giants Hall handicap to get us underway over a mile and a quarter. Blistering Barney and Red Derrick both away very smartly in Chagall, Arcadian Knights, Magical Mile and Sea Grey. The grey horse not too far away. Thunder Max is on the inside, just in midfield at the moment, racing in company with Splendent. And then towards the back at this early stage, E.T., an Arctic Fox, typical woman, the orange cap on the outside of Telly Red, uh, pulling hard in the red colours. And Highway Grey is on that one's inside. They've now... Coming inside their final seven furlongs, Red Derrick, the best turned out winner, is racing on the outside of uh, Blistering Barney, who's won over much longer trips than this. In Chagall, the red and dark green is following with on the outside Arcadian Knights, just in advance of that one, followed by Sea Grey and Thunder Max and Splendent, Magical Mile on the outside. And the back five, E.T., Typical Woman, Arctic Fox, Highway Grey and Telly Red as they're on the left-hand turn. Racing back towards home. 
and getting fairly close to being at halfway. And it is still blistering Barney and Paddy Mathers on the inside of Red Derrick and Andrew Elliott setting quite a decent looking pace with Arcadian Knights and Billy Lochnane following. They're into the home straight now in Chagall. Andrew Mullen in fourth place running inside their final half mile with Sea Grey next. Thunder Max on the inside. Then Splendid Magical Marl. E.T. Arctic Fox ahead of uh, Highway Grey and uh, Telly Red as they race now inside their final three furlongs. And as they do so, blistering Barney trying to find more in front to Red Derrick. Arcadian Knights is sent into pursuit of the front pair. Sea Grey in Chagall now launching an assault on the outside. E.T. trying to get through on the inner. Then Thunder Max as they now run with a furlong and a half to go. Sea Grey, Jason Watson in Chagall challenging. Arcadian Knights blistering Barney is keeping on on the inside in fourth. Then Thunder Max, E.T. trying to get out. Splendent hampered as they now race towards the last half furlong. Sea Grey clinging on but now E.T. is in the clear and powering past under Ross Ryan, close to the finish, E.T. gets home in front of Sea Grey. Highway Grey made tremendous headway to be third, then Thunder Max and in Chagall. E.T. comes home in front of stable companion Sea Grey, with Highway Grey back in uh, third place. One, two, four, O'Mara. Tim Eastby third, so the prize goes over the Pennines, and E.T. had a bit of sort of bit of manoeuvring to do and a bit of running to do but he's done just that he has yeah he's quickened it well once he's been pulled off the rail and he's uh, stayed on really strongly just got the better of uh, of C. Gray who's making his turf derby yep Michael Owen walking past he's happy 17 to 2 a little bit of support for him um, the son of fast company in the colours of Gallup Race and Ross Ryan on board as we pick it up down towards that inside and just here you're thinking well where's he going to go yeah, well, he's, he's, he's got to pull him off the fence, hasn't he? Because Blistering Barney's still in front of him. He's waiting for the gap to come now. Um, and then you've got Kevin Stott on Thunderbox. He's keeping him in now, but he's just travelling the better of that pair. He's got the gap now, but he's still got ground to make up on his stable mate, who's gone for home, C. Gray, who's run on turf for the first time. He's worn him down late on. Good run first time up from Highway Gray. Really promising start yeah. this season. Would you take a really short price about him in a similar company next time? Yeah, well, that, that's fair comment, isn't he? He's a horse that wants a strong gallop to come off and and um, he's not the force of all fourth in the Zetland Gold Cup. He's down to 77 now. But it's E2, who's home in front. 